Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Me and Ayana, who you already know from previous videos, we've had both our um, massive weight loss transformations. I'll pop our pictures up here. Um, we're going to answer a comment that we got on our last um, video we did. Uh, the video that we did was called Ketosis is the Ultimate Weight Loss Hack for a Busy Schedule. And um, somebody commented that um, she has to do no veggies. So she has to do a carnivore diet, but for a certain health condition, right? A skin condition that she was diagnosed with at 18. And, um, and she recently realized that she, that calories do count. <laughs> they do count. And oh. uh, she's realizing that, okay, so now if I really want to lose weight doing carnivore or keto without the veggies, which is like kind of like carnivore, how is it that I can feel this fullness because carnivore foods don't have a lot of volume, you know? So yeah. there you go let's go ahead and discuss this i wanted to say a lot of things but then i'm like you know what let's just film a youtube video on that and discuss this topic because i feel like it is just so so common does it look like yes. i rolled out of bed i feel like it does i <laughs> just put makeup on oh, and no, I'm like, Maybe I, I love it i literally just no, rolled out of bed and it hopped on the interview <laughs> no i love it i love it it's yeah. cute it's cute um oh. it's giving me like uh 80s 90s vibe <laughs> right but it's like, I'm you know? obsessed with crunchies lately <laughs> yes I love it thank um, you um uh no you know I felt I had the same issue coming into uh carnivore when I did go into it um back in 2021 um for the first time so I and the reason why is because when I got into carnivore I was still in a cutting phase in fact I was at the tail end of it mm -hmm. and so that was a little bit more difficult so I hung on to lean meats to get me through that mm -hmm. and also uh, low fat yogurt um, mixed with protein powder because I didn't know any better back then I didn't know like you know what I mean yeah. so I was like okay I'll have that at night and then I'll have my lean like chicken thighs um, skinless, bo uh, boneless chicken thighs. And then I had eggs with egg whites and, um, like with the chicken thighs, I might have a fatty piece of salmon with it or, um, a smaller piece of red meat with that. Mm -hmm. So I would pair, uh, like lean meat or lean protein with something a little bit fattier. That's how I dealt with it. Okay. And then as the years went on, if I were in a cut, cause I'll be in and out, then I did sometimes add veggies just to get that full feeling because let's be honest, I'm just innately a volume eater from mm. baby up. Yeah. And then that's something that I've been delving deeper into lately um, with regards to the uh, vagal nerve, the vagus nerve and chewing activates the vagus nerve. And when you activate the vagus nerve, it releases acetylcholine. And it just really improves the motility of your gut. It prevents SIBO. We did, the last video that I just posted was specifically is what we talked about, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, we froze for a second. I have to edit that out a few minutes in, if I remember. <laughs> okay, you're back. Yeah. So that's another thing, you know, like um, not eating enough volume of food means you're not chewing enough means that your vagus nerve isn't being activated enough so that can affect mm -hmm. your mood that can affect everything you know and i noticed what we were talking about earlier i was telling you about and the post that i did on my instagram about uh, depression anxiety and i had that yeah. and i feel like it's like uh, that's what burnout is like when you just put your you know you, you just press on the gas pedal for way too long it, what happens is that your vagus nerve just is burnt out and you, you got to give it a few days of just relaxation for it to to really be able to do its job of, of uh, calming you down. So, wow. yeah, all those things are interrelated. And so I think to go back to the original comment, um, mm -hmm. let, let me say exactly what, what she said. Okay. I've always had a big appetite and I've always been slightly chubbier than the rest of my family. A few weeks ago, I was confronted with the shocking realization that calories do count a lot. It's 
you know i i guess a lot of maybe because we can we come from like tracking and everything it's just so easy for us to realize how critically important it is to track but i guess if somebody just stumbled across carnivore or like certain influencers like oh you don't 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 count calories or like you know it's not you, you don't even say the word calorie i guess then they are hit with this realization that they do need to track you know and um, yes. It happens time and time again. I'm constantly seeing people being like, I started carnivore and I've been doing it to the T for six months a year, have not lost weight. And I always want to say, well, are you in a deficit? Those are the lucky you know, ones. A lot of people are gaining weight. Well, yeah. Right? Remember that video we did on priming where we talk about why yeah. it's not going to be helpful? Just go and scroll up the comments. See how many people are like, thank you for talking about that. I gained so much weight and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, it's 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 so hard when people realize that they did this to themselves and it, they would uh -huh. have, you know, weight loss is hard no matter what. And now you, now you compound the problem and you have spent, you have to spend extra time in a caloric deficit to lose the weight that you gain doing priming. It's, you know, yes, it's yes. And then another thing I hear a lot of too, that kind of goes with that is that, well, I only lose weight if I eat at least 1800 calories, if I eat 1200 calories, I start gaining weight. And I think there's another disconnect there because right. nowhere <laughs> in human history do you ever start eating less and gain weight. I think they're just misunderstanding how their metabolism is downregulating. These are the and immortals of the world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the less I eat, the more extra energy I have to survive famines of the future. I'm like, yeah, there's a disconnect there. They're just I'll not take getting whatever it. you're taking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's just maybe not consistently tracking right. every single day, everything you put in your mouth, um, inaccuracy and in tracking, or just not understanding that your metabolism needs fixing. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, sure, you could stress yourself out if you like severely under eat for a little bit bit of time and then you'll see oh I gain a, a few pounds like two three pounds that's very it's very easily your weight can go up and down by five seven depending on your size maybe even 10 pounds just from fluid accumulation because cortisol is jacked up and so you're retaining fluids and that's not body fat trust me and yeah. if that were the case nobody would ever die from starvation so exactly yeah anyway <laughs> so to continue the comment um mm -hmm. all righty so she uh she just realized that calories do count a lot now this was slightly surprising to me since being low carb high fat i never ever even thought of calories so i tracked my calories and it turns out i was eating over three thousand calories a day easily i would have to lose 10 kilos to be the size i'd like to be so a kilo is 2.2 pounds so okay i don't like to do math 22 so that's good Thank yeah let's yeah. do the math <laughs> I, I must now be in a caloric deficit and aim to have 1200 calories a day you don't necessarily have to go from 3k to 1200 you know i feel like 1200 calories especially if you have to do a carnivore because of your skin condition you know i feel like i i would i don't like to go this low with the calories right yeah. So, and then, yeah, and then she says, um, to eat such little volumes of food, since being keto means eating very high calorie food, I basically avoid vegetables completely. And that's a struggle for me. How would you recommend I go about this? 1800 calories, which is a recommended daily intake for women, isn't very much food as someone who avoids vegetables, right? Constantly having to restrain myself from eating when I'm already abstaining from most foods to begin with is a painful realization. I've also realized that women that are skinny basically never eat, which is a slightly depressing thought. Any words of wisdom and encouragement you can kindly help me with for motivation would be greatly appreciated. Okay. There's a lot there. <laughs> a lot. Uh, I but I do have to say, I understand her. And before you go into it, because I know you're going to have a lot of gems. Um. 1800 calories is where she's thinking she wants to start to be in that deficit is way better than 1200. Oh. And I do notice sadly that when I talk to women and I really get a lot out of them, they aren't eating a lot. And that's why their metabolism is going, is down regulating. Therefore, yeah, if you eat a normal amount, you are gaining weight. But anyways, I just wanted to add that in there. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, and that goes into the video we did on reverse dieting, and I think we, we did a video that says, will under eating making me fat or something like that, where we kind of touch upon reverse diet. We have a bunch where we talk about reverse dieting and the importance of doing that, especially if you have been uh, dieting for a while, um, your body just naturally adapts. You give it less calories, it adapts to survive on those fewer calories. This is a way that your body tries to postpone uh, starving to death. Um, and wasting away from not eating enough calories. It just slows down the metabolism. So it is definitely, let's be very clear, it's definitely a lot harder to lose weight if you can only do carnivore. It is definitely harder because the volume just simply isn't there, right? Yes. There is yep. no, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and be like, no, it's, it's, you know, you'll be fine. And no, it's definitely so much easier if you can increase the volume of food and usually, you know, veggies or um, the, there's so many plant foods that can offer that bulk, which is why you see a lot of people, especially like bodybuilders. And uh, we we really watch a lot of the bikini fitness models and we follow them mm -hmm. and they're always eating tons of volume uh, or, not. Yeah. you know, they, they, they really are able to create those massive caloric deficits for an extended period of time because they're simulating um, the volume and, and they're eating tons of veggies, you know? Exactly. Because I've, I've been told by my coach way back when I used to compete and I've heard current um, competitors, Olympia level competitors, like, Hey, if you're hungry, eat a bowl of broccoli. Or eat eat some veg. You know what I mean. Or, what, or actually, cucumbers. You know what? Actually, right. The, the cucumber with the stevia. Cut up cucumbers and pulls the stevia. And the current reigning Miss Olympia Jennifer Dory said the same thing. She will. I got from her actually first. Yeah. Cut up um, cucumber and sprinkle it with yeah. stevia, and that's what she'll yeah. do if she yeah. wants to eat. And those are people that are taking tons of PEDs, performing enhancing drugs, and they're taking whether they say it or not. Like it's pretty much well known. You know, it's like this tacit understanding. Like you don't get to yeah. that level of leanness with those physiques that you see on social media without also taking all kinds of fat burners and they start stacking them and they start increasing the amount and the dosage the closer they get to the show so yeah because even if they're not on peds in the sense of you know true like like steroids Glenn or Anavar. Yeah, or that kind of they thing. are probably taking some kind of fat burner right yohim bean yeah. um lion's mane um, mm -hmm. we we're talking about nicotine earlier, there uh, asthma mm -hmm. drugs, um, like what else, what are, what are some common things? A lot of caffeine, caffeine is a very strong stimulant, you oh, know? Yeah. Um, like caffeine, clen, ephedra, those things at the very least, I'm sure are being used, uh, it, because people who take that still consider themselves natural because it's not an androgenic. It's not like a PED that's changing Verilization, you know, potential verilization yes. of their voice. That's right. Yeah. Uh huh. So yes, it's not easy <laughs> to create no. a calorie deficit. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but um, here's here's what I would say. First, establish that you truly cannot have anything else. You got to establish that it truly is um, any plant food that you, that is causing the skin condition. Cause sometimes it might be just like a few plant foods that are causing that reaction. It might not be everything, you know? Yeah. She, she might be able to have a whole lot more variety in her diet than she initially thought. And mm -hmm. that's the power of the carnivore diet. It's like an elimination diet. Um, I mean, some people thrive on it and they can just eat that. And that's fantastic. I, I'm all for that, but some people might not need to go all the way for the rest yeah. of their lives. And this is where mm -hmm. you can do that for a short period of time and then start to, okay, what, what are some things that you feel like, oh, maybe if I could just have a little bit of that, it would make my weight loss journey so much easier. And then see, okay, yeah. how's my skin, you know? Did, it, did, did that skin condition come back with a vengeance or not? And then it's, it's a process. But it can, if you, if you have that data, if you, you know, this is why I, I love active learning as opposed to passive learning where you're just, you know, listening to all these people. Okay. And, but they're all saying different things and you can just literally go crazy. Trying to 
<laughs> it's like, what do I eat? So you have to be an active yeah. learner and just, just apply things on yourself and see with your own genetics and lifestyle, which what works and what doesn't. Exactly. Because that's why there's a few people in the space that I really love um, that uh, besides, you know, you talk about that. And also um, Nisha Berry, Dr. Berry's wife, she is all about finding, she talks about that a lot, finding what works for you. Do carnivore as elimination and then bring back things and see how you react. You know, yeah. she's on the Nisha Berry diet, she says, you know, it's yeah. like, do yeah. what works for you. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that really helps a lot with mental health for people because, you know, people who are gravitating towards carnivore diet, they want to be healthier, right? But then if it's exacerbating your mental health and making you feel like, wow, I can only eat this for the rest of my life, and it's, and then you feel like you keep then falling off the wagon because it's like either just meat, which seems to be impossible for certain people, or... Um, or I'm never going to achieve my goal, then whatever, I might as well just eat whatever I want. Then it's like you're yeah. you're stuck in that, you know, uh, cycle, which is definitely not healthy. Yeah, that now, all or nothing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say you truly do thrive on a carnivore diet and it is working for you and it genuinely clears up your skin, makes everything better, and you do want to lose weight. So what is the solution? I would say then um, increase physical activity as opposed to restricting, you know, so yeah. to restrict on a carnivore diet where it's already like a low volume of food is just going to be torturous, you know? It will. Yeah. It will. Because when I first got with you, um, uh, when you were actively my coach, uh, that is what we did. And, you know, it worked. I mean, my calories, my deficit calories were not, uh, you know, what I like to call poverty macros. <laughs> so I was able to do that, but the activity, you know, definitely increased. And so that was beneficial and it led to my goal yeah. pretty quickly. And here is a hack, the ultimate hack. Um, some people have, some people might be luckier and they can do this more so than others. The ultimate hack is not so much about, you know, spending three hours at the gym. The ultimate hack is being able to get background activity, desk bike, treadmill desk, some form yeah. of activity while you're being productive. And the reason I say some people are luckier than others, because if you are working from home, usually when I get clients who work from home, they're just so easy because all they do, they get a desk bike or if they already have a treadmill, they'll just get a $40 um, desk on it. Yeah. And now, you know, you're just burning through calories and you can eat more and still create a massive caloric deficit and you lose weight so easy, so quickly, mm -hmm. especially if mm -hmm. you're doing it on a carnivore diet, like really weight loss is just so much easier there. Yes. <laughs> so right. true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is so true. Now, if you don't have that option, yes, it will be a little bit harder, but you can take advantage of the times where you're not at work, right? If If you cannot get a desk bike at your job um, and you cannot, you know, which hack that in any way, shape, or form, then you would have to take advantage of the times outside of your job, either before or after or both, and the weekends. Because at the yeah. end of the day, you know, we want to take the average. You, you want to create um, an, you want to create a certain amount of caloric deficit. Now, theoretically speaking, um, you burn one pound of body fat for every 3,500 calorie total deficit. So as, as long as you know that you're creating a 3,500 calorie deficit um, over a period of a few days, you're going to drop a pound. But you're yeah. not going to drop a pound without creating that. You know, now if you see a weight scale changing, it's probably water, you know. Uh, yeah. Like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. Um, and so you might have to kind of really squeeze out that movement on the time in, during the periods of time where, where you can um, for a period mm -hmm. until you lose all the weight and then maintaining it is just so much easier, you know? Yes. Maintaining is so much easier. I know that like um, I've heard the quote, well, we don't have a weight loss problem in America. We have a maintenance problem, which is true. But if you, you know, because people keep gaining the weight back, yeah. but if you have the tools 
Um, and, uh, you know, you get with a coach like yourself or like myself, you reverse diet and then you just maintain that lifestyle. It is very easy yes. to maintain. It and really is. this is where we have to remind everybody reverse diet. Don't just say you lose all the weight, but then make sure you reverse diet out because that's going to make maintenance so much easier too. Because if you lose all the weight, even on carnivore, you, your body mm -hmm. will adapt your yeah. in so many different ways, right? And so, oh my gosh, yes. yes. <laughs> and you so, always adapt. Your body is always, and I, and I swear, I think that some people um, adapt quicker than others. I don't know. It's oh, weird. I think yes. it depends. I think I'm one of those people. I adapt. Me too. Yes. And, and the people who adapt faster, they adapt in both ways. So your metabolism slows down very quickly, but it also speeds up very quickly. And that's a good thing. Oh, mm -hmm. that is good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Which is great news when you're coming into reverse diet, you will see that, okay, once you start the reverse dieting process, which we don't have to go because we've already talked about this and the guide, shameless plug. <laughs> Super brief metabolism. My guy talked about um, the if if you want to just go ahead and like do it yourself, it explains the basics and how I do it. You know, with my clients. Um, but mm -hmm. basically, the reverse dieting, um, you have to slowly increase the amount of calories you're eating week after week plus um, strength training because the strength training is what's yes. going to send a strong hormonal signal to the body to speed up its metabolism and also making sure you eat at least one to. Uh, just focus, uh, I guess the goal should be 1.1 grams of protein per pound ideal body weight, which yeah. you know, by the end of your diet, you're already at your ideal body weight. So just take 1.1 grams of protein per pound of your weight and make sure you hit that um, religiously. And those three mm -hmm. things are going to uh, speed up your metabolism. Yeah. And that way yeah. you eat more calories because your metabolism is faster. So now you can maintain a lean physique while not having to restrict really much. Yes. And even be, even if we rewind and go back to when you were talking about like about 3,500 calories to uh, lose a pound, right? Mm -hmm. um, so before you do that, you might want to have a baseline of a couple of weeks of tracking what your activity is and what you're eating, just so you've got a base of like, okay, this is what I'm doing already without changing anything. And then you subtract from that because some people don't do that. Don't use online calculators. They are so incredibly inaccurate because they do not take into account your dieting history, right? Yeah. So it might tell you, oh, you, you should be able to eat 3000 calories a day. But then when you go ahead and you eat that, you start gaining weight. And that's because you've dieted in the past, you've suppressed your metabolism, and you never went through a reverse dieting phase. So you never corrected that metabolic slowdown. Metabolic slowdown simply does not get automatically corrected. It doesn't just happen. You have to actually send those hormonal, those correct hormonal signals to the body via the strength training and via the protein intake. So the body goes and puts back on the muscle and that's how it speeds up the metabolism. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I feel, yeah, I feel like this is good, right? I think um, we yes. kind of, is, is there anything else like we're missing when it comes to targeting this specific topic? No, you know, I, I, I really um, loved her uh, question. I think that like, you know, if she has to stay full carnivore, yeah. then yes, increase that activity um, uh, to help. Um, and then, you know, mix lean meats with a little fatty meat so that you yes. can have more volume. If you can add in a few plants without any harm, that will help too, right. you know? So, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe fruits. A lot of people can do fruits, um, and it doesn't seem to have as much of, a reaction when it comes to the yes. skin or any kind of, you know, like Dr. Paul Saladino, he, I mean, the reason he did the carnivore is because he had eczema, right? And so that mm -hmm. carnivore cleared it, but now he's eating all kinds of carbs and still clear skin. So not everything yeah. is always like, you know, this like all or nothing approach. Exactly. Yeah, because I can handle fruits well. And some people are like, oh, my gosh, if if we switch to people who feel like they can't control um, mm -hmm. that sweetness. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not one of them, like as far as fruits are concerned, yeah. I can have fruit yeah. and I don't feel like overeating fruit, but yeah. some people can't. Yeah. So know thyself if that's you. Okay. Then fine. 
But if you can manage berries and whatever too, uh, that is yeah. very good volume. Strawberries, yeah. very good volume. Yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with the idea with the thought. Like if I even sense sweetness, it's going to trigger my craving and I'm going to go back and I'm going to have a binge. And sometimes having that belief is what yeah. kind of gives you the excuse for why you binged, you know? Yeah. Because come yeah. on, like really an apple or blueberries are, are really what what's causing your addiction. I think there are deeper things that are happening that's causing you to be depressed or anxious or there's having a low baseline dopamine level that's leading you to be in such a vulnerable state. Yeah, because I'm sorry. Like I just... I've never been one for overeating uh, fruit. I, like, like I just, that's just me. Yeah. That's just me. I just, I've never, I've never done it. I've me never too. done it. Me too. I, I, you I just, can't, you physically cannot overeat fruit. I mean, it's not that hyper palatable. No, Even, maybe, maybe dates, but that's dried fruit. So right. that doesn't count. Even dates, I would say personally, like you, there's only so I, many dates you can eat before you're sick of it. <laughs> Yeah, before it's like, Ugh, because right. the fruit has fiber. So that uh, makes it so it's not straight sugar. It, so that helps too. And I definitely don't overeat vegetables. Yeah. So and I don't overeat protein. So that's why those three things, you know, one ingredient foods like um, the doctor you interviewed uh, previously mm. said, one ingredient foods, you know, yeah. if you don't want to be full carnivore, yes. that works too. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, sometimes maybe you would have to do some concessions. Can I say that? What did you say? Concessions. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Like, and see, like, like um, I don't know if yeah. that's the correct word. <laughs> when I used to uh -huh. teach at UM at my everyday, though, whenever I would like, I can't find a word. I'm like, I'm international. So I'm allowed to search for words. <laughs> Man, I can't use that excuse. Right. Let's get out of jail free card. <laughs> I'm international. <laughs> uh, so, um, yes, sometimes you might have to maybe not, maybe, you know, let's say hypothetically carnivore is the best human diet, right? Let's, let's, let's move from that hypothesis. Maybe it's okay to not eat the most perfect diet in the world for a period of time until you lose the weight more easily. And then when it's easier than that you don't have to restrict as much you can eat more calories then you know optimize for health and then do carnivore you know that's also another option okay so you're speaking to someone who's done that quite a few times so whenever i have found myself like oh i want to shed a few pounds you know what i mean um uh because my body likes to be like in the 140s but i like to be in the 130s so anyways yeah. um that's just my preference but anyways so whenever I want to cut, I do exactly what you just said. I'm like, you know what? Oh, well, I am going to have a um, uh, drink more water. Uh, so therefore, I'm going to use more electrolytes. I am going to have more veggies so I can fill up my right. um, stomach and right. it's more doable. Protein is obviously a mainstay, but I do that. And then when I'm maintaining and my calories are going back up, it's so easy to do carnivore. So I, I naturally lean into that too. So true. So true. Yeah. I mean, so, how, like, it's very rare to find somebody who got shredded on just a carnivore diet, you know, usually mm -hmm. these are people already have the genetics to be super lean and they're doing it, you yes. know, for health and yeah, sure. Like the inflammation drops and all that kind of stuff, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's the easiest approach. It's, it's not. And I know there's outliers out there. I have a friend um, here in Vegas she, but she also is, she does like 30,000 steps a day because she's um, a mom of, I don't know, four, five, I don't know. Um, yeah. She is full carnivore, although she loves her Coke Zero. Um, right. And, I think uh, I know who you're she, talking about, but yeah. genetics plays a part too, right? Yeah. Now, uh, she used to compete just like me and she was, she did have thicker days. You know what I mean? But um, genetically, not like us. Yeah. Exactly. Not where we had obesity in our past. Right, right. Yeah, different certain ethnicities or races, they just naturally struggle a lot to deposit fat subcutaneously under the skin. Mm -hmm. 
yes. you know and uh and so always like it's important that we also remember that when we're trying to like compare ourselves to somebody with completely different race or ethnicity um True. that's a very very strong contributor to to where the fat is being deposited or if it can be deposited at all Exactly. That is so true because we are, as far as ethnicities, um, if you want to go there, we're kind of the outliers in the community too. Now yeah. that I think about it. Yeah. 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 This is why I always like any goal I, I like to set for myself. I think the easiest way, shortcut way to achieve a goal more easily is find somebody as similarly to you as possible. Similar uh -huh. background, similar history, similar lifestyle. The closer they are to you and the, the, the more likely that their approach that works for them might work for you. Yeah, no, that's why I was drawn to you, not for obviously ethnic background, but because of your um, background as far as weight loss and, and the right. difference, uh, you know, right. similarities right. with that. Yeah. Um, you know, you can tell and... like, when people who never struggle with their weight, never had a weight problem and they try to help people lose weight. And it's like, you don't even know the half of it. Come on now. <laughs> I know. Right. I know. It's right. Like, no, that is so true. That yeah. is so true. Because from the, from a person from like an outsider, a person who's never had a weight problem, who tries to like help other people. It's like, it, it can seem so easy from the outside. Just do this. Right. Why? Just right. do this. It's like, if you only knew all the things that go into it, you know? It, it is so true because even when I used to compete back then, it's it's changing. There's more women of color in the bikini division. Yeah. Now in bodybuilding, uh, you know, African-Americans or uh, if African background, no matter where you are in the world, have always dominated uh, the other divisions of yeah. bodybuilding. Yeah. But bikini in the beginning was not. Now it's changing. We have right. more women of color. Um, but the thing is, though, that uh, with my genetics and all that, even with bikini 10 years ago, I was an outlier um, because most of the girls were ectomorphs. They were yes. uh, ones that had struggled to uh, gain muscle or they were that in between where they put on muscle, but it was easy for them to stay lean. And I was the one who was easy to gain uh, muscle and fat. So and um, more, a lot yeah. of uh, yeah. people that were similar to me yeah. were in the other divisions, not bikini. Mm, like so I had bigger. to, yes. Mm. So I had to go even further down to leanness, even way back then. Um, to be competitive right. so it's interesting you know right. yeah mm -hmm. we should probably yeah. do another one since we've been um uh, and i've been diving so deep into the uh smart drugs nootropics and all that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. remember I, i'd be like texting him like is there anybody who's not on like like they're like walking pharmacies like every single successful person it's not like I didn't know, but you know, sometimes you kind of zero in on, on a topic and you start really being aware of it. Uh, maybe we should do another one of those. Let us know if you yes. are interested. Yeah. And all of like the smart drugs, all the fat burners, or just all the extra stuff that people are taking, whether to lose weight or to perform productively or lead like yes. uh, multiple, like, like big companies and stuff like that. And then you have those people who can do it all, you know, like they're yeah. uh, super lean into fitness and also have a very big business that they're operating. Like there's a lot of demands on the, on these people. And apparently um, they're not everybody. Most of them aren't natural in the way yeah that, so know. true yeah so we true probably talk about that yeah yes let us know if you're interested in that topic it's like it's a whole whole universe of things that we could talk about it's just insane mm -hmm. how many things people are taking and and it's insane how many different substances can do so many different things for different people but yeah, I, let's not yeah. open this right now. Let's kind of keep it, you know, short and sweet on this topic, answering this um, woman's questions. Thank you so much for that comment, by yes. the way. I think hopefully this will help a lot of people because I think it's a very common, common thing that people stumble upon the moment they gravitate towards carnivore. And a lot of people gravitate towards carnivore because they want to lose weight. And for them, it's like, maybe this is it. Maybe this is going to help me lose weight. And then all of a sudden they realize, like, you know, okay, that's it. I can't eat more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Um, Ayana, thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I dragged yes. you on the bed. 
this morning. Oh yeah, don't worry. I got up quick this time and got ready. <laughs> good, good. You're always looking great. Tell thank people you. where they can find you, work with you, uh, all the good stuff. Yes, thank you so much. So I'm Pilar Fit Vegas on Instagram and YouTube, as well as Pilar Fit LV on TikTok. Perfect, Las Vegas. Yes. Um, yes, yes. Awesome. And you guys know where to find me. Um, all my guide, Super Breed Metabolism Guide is the one that I kind of touched upon, right? The, what, the reverse dieting one. Um. Dopamine brain, I will always recommend that because I feel like it really helps people um, regulate their baseline dopamine, increase their baseline dopamine, which is really, I think, the driving force of why people can or cannot achieve any goal in their lives. Um, and my website, drsearsoliver.com forward slash shop for all the guides and drsearsoliver.com forward slash coaching for the coaching stuff. And, and yeah, that, thank you everybody for um, sticking with us. I hope this was helpful. Give us more questions and we might answer them. And uh, thank you again, Ayana. And thank you, hey. everybody. And if you like this kind of content, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell icon so YouTube alerts you every time I post a new video. And until next time, bye, everyone. Bye-bye.